Have you ever wondered what makes one house more valuable than another? Sometimes they can be next to each other in the same street and yet one is worth thousands of dollars more. Today we're talking to Greville Paps from WBP Property Group about what he considers valuable when looking at a property. So Greville, obviously there is a lot more to valuing properties though than just the bricks and mortar and the, the land the house sits on. That's right Des, so we're in Armstrong Street Middle Park and it, it's all about the lifestyle, it's all about the coffee, um, the walking distance to the beach and Albert Park. Greville, you talk about anchor points, that's obviously one thing that uh, most people have an anchor point for why they buy somewhere. The anchor here is, is, is the beach and it's, it's the Albert Park Lake, it's the proximity to the city and those sort of factors. So there, there is a different anchor and what I really like about Albert Park and Middle Park is the fact that it is, if you look at it from the air, it's, it's a very narrow peninsula and you're bounded by, you know, to the south you've got Beaconsfield Parade, to the north Canterbury Road, and at one end you've got Fitzroy Street which uh, bounds it in there, and the other end Pickle Street, um, Port Melbourne. So it's a very narrow strip of land. And I suppose in terms of valuing, or in terms of value, property value, it's about being within walking distance to those amenities, those cafes and those iconic um, landmarks, I suppose. And, and say in Bridport Street, you have Andrew's Hamburgers. If you haven't had a hamburger there, Des, I recommend you get one. It's one of the best hamburgers in Melbourne. But you've got the, the Avenue Bookshop uh, as well there, which is one of the best bookshops in Melbourne. So that's what it's all about, the, these villages. It's about those um, unique um, types of landmarks in, uh, in those villages. Obviously, the circumstances that draw people to an area change, and after 10 years, they might find they have to move out and another lot move in. The thing that first attracts you to the likes of Albert Park and Middle Park is the, is the high land value and the, and the investment um, opportunity of buying into those areas. In fact, Albert Park, Middle Park probably has the, the highest land value uh, per square metre in Melbourne. You know, typically it can be as high as $5,000 a square metre. So that's what I think what attracts people there. And, um, but you, you're right, as, as children um, come on the scene and they start to grow, you, you then tend to run out of space because you know, typically the Albert Park, Middle Park, not, not very large land, blocks of land. They're generally 150 to 250 square metres and they're little Victorian, Edwardian, uh, Federation style cottages. So you're then faced with that dilemma you know, to, to go up or to extend out if you do have the room or otherwise well, the, the trend tends to be that you, you, you move down further Bayside into some of the other villages in Bayside like Hampton, Black Rock, Bow Morris and, and those sorts of areas. All right, Greville, we're going to uh, put you to work. Have you got somewhere near here that we can look at that will exemplify why prices can vary so much in a small pocket? I have, Des. Just around the corner, only a short walking distance from where we are right now. Short walk from the village. That's it. It's going to be worth a fortune. Greville at typical Albert Park Street. Behind this uh, brick wall, we've got a, a, a small single-fronted property. There's a lot of value, extra value in there because of what's out the back. Yeah, that's right, Des. A very typical row of Victorian era cottages. Uh, some of these uh, cottages do have rear access and that, that really does bring a premium to the value of the property. And the, the value of a car park in this area could be as, as much as $100,000. So uh, very valuable to have car parking in Albert Park, Middle Park. All right, Greville, what about things like the facade of a place like this? Certainly the period features there is very important. Now, this, this particular house here is a, is a typical Federation style uh, house. It's solid brick. You can see the, you know, the bullnose veranda. Uh, you can see the, uh, the decorative uh, cast iron lace work, the tessellated tiles, double hung timber sash windows, and you know, the, the intricate tuck pointing in the brickwork. Uh, all very important uh, period features uh, and, and really do enhance value because we're not replicating that anymore. Gravel, it's unrenovated, but it, it looks like it's got pretty good bones. Very good bones, Des. It's a typical uh, Victorian uh, Federation style dwelling. We've got 12 to 13 foot ceilings, you know, elaborate cornice work, you've got rosettes, a nice wide hallway. And underneath this carpet, you've probably got you know, original Baltic pine uh, wide timber boards, which for somebody coming in, uh, you've got a blank uh, landscape here. You can just uh, pull it up and uh, start polishing the floorboards. I guess as well as all the potential, Gravel, they've also got three nice big bedrooms. Yeah, and very typical of this uh, era, large bedrooms, fireplaces in every room. Once again, the high ceilings, the, the rosettes, you know, the very wide skirting boards, as you can see, and, and, and the cornice work. 
And Greville obviously always looking for extra value for a house and what it's worth if they can use a third bedroom or maybe convert it to another bathroom or extra living space, always helps. That's right, Des, because typically in these types of houses, the kitchen, bathroom and the toilet is at, at the back of the house. Greville, a small but serviceable kitchen next to a small but serviceable living area. I guess when you're looking to, for what is, is value, it's where you can add to that living and kitchen area? Mm -hmm. Des, value is about unlocking the potential. And certainly in this house, you would knock this whole kitchen, bathroom, toilet down and you would knock out this wall between the kitchen and the lounge room to create this large open space family kitchen uh, room uh, with lots of light coming in. So for somebody looking to buy, um, that's what I would recommend uh, they do here. And I guess from a company like yours point of view, you would say it's well worthwhile if someone's looking at a house as wanting to buy to get an idea of the value, get an expert who knows property. Exactly right, Des. When you go and buy a car, you typically go and get, call on a mate who's, got a, who's a mechanic or the RACB to check that car out before you buy. But few, very few people do that when they go and buy a house. And it's the biggest investment many people make in their lives. So I really do highly recommend that you get a property advisor or a valuer to come through and to check that property out before you sign on the dotted line.